Hello, Stingray boys and girls. We're going to work on some more math tonight. Tonight, we're taking a look at the multiplicative identity as well as the additive identity. And since those guys are so easy, and I'm sure you're familiar with them, we're also going to throw in the commutative property. I'm going to take a look at all these properties. Um, they should be review, but just to make sure, we're going to go over them. You need to be familiar with them. You need to be able to master them. So let's look at some sample problems so we have a better handle on what these properties are all about. Let's begin. Boys and girls, let's take a look at some mathematical rules. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the multiplicative identity and the additive identity, and then we will close with the commutative property. Now, the two identities, the, the idea behind identity is that the number is going to remain the same. And when we take a look at the multiplicative identity, the, the root word is multiply. What can we multiply any given number by so that it will stay the same? Let's take three for starters. Three times what will equal three? Well, we, you know, of course, that's one, okay? Now let's take a look at another one. Let's say um, 456 times what? will be equal to itself, 456. Well, that, that's going to be 1. Okay, we can, It even works for negative numbers. We can take negative 77 times what will equal negative 77, and of course that is 1. Any number multiplied by 1 will remain the same. Because, look, look, let's think of this through logically. We're taking 1, 3, and that's equal to 3. We're taking 1, 456, and that's going to remain 456. We can even take 1, negative 77, and what do we have? We have a negative 77. So anything multiplied by 1 will remain the same. I think we're all familiar with that. Let's move on. The additive identity. Once again, this time we're asking ourselves, what can we what can we add this time? Additive, the root word of additive is add. What can we add to any number, um, and it still remain the same? Well, let's start off with uh, 63 plus what will give us 63? Well, we know, of course, that's zero. What about 72 plus what will equal 72? Well, this is a tough one, but you guessed it, it's zero. And once again, it works with even negative numbers, um, which once again, these integers will be using later on in the year. And, and what a negative is this, you know, I, when I hear like negative 13, just think, you know, I owe $13, and if I do nothing or add nothing or take nothing away, I'm still gonna owe $13. So that is the additive identity. Very simple. Let's see if I can find the commutative property. I think it's somewhere around here. Um, there it is. Okay, I just kind of have it. The commutative property, this is a little more complex of an idea. Um, commute is the root word of commutative and think of your parents when they commute to work they're, they're going to work they're moving around they're commuting to work um, and, and here we have let's take different algebraic expressions um, with addition for example 3 plus 5 we can commute or move these these terms these constants around if, and it's going to be the same thing as 5 plus 3 um, the order doesn't matter when our operation, all of our operation signs are, are addition. We can even make this more complex and say we do 2 plus 7 plus 9 is equal to 9 plus 7 plus 2, and that would even be equal to 7 plus um, 9 plus 2. We're just, we're just changing the order. And let, and let, let's see. Um, seven, 2 plus 7 is 9, plus 9 is 18. So this is still going to total up to be 18. 
9 plus 7 is 16, 16 plus 2, you guessed it, is 18, 7 plus 9 is 16 again, plus 2 is 18. So when we're just adding different terms, we can commute or move these terms around and it won't affect our, our, our total or our sum. <coughs> this is also true for multiplication. I can take 15 and multiply it by 2 and that will equal 2 times 15. 15 times 2 is 30 and 2 times 15 is also 30. We could do 2 times 3 times 4 is equal to 4 times 3 times 2. We just do reverse order. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Now, why do you think this is true? Well, let's think about the relationship between multiplication and addition. Um, multiplication is just repeated addition. So you're really doing the same operation, just you're doing it multiple times. So the commutative property is true for addition and multiplication, but let's take a look at what it's not true for. Let's try, let's try um, subtraction. 5 minus 2, is that equal to 2 minus 5? Absolutely not. 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus 5, you have 2 and you take 5 away from it? Well, you know what that's going to leave you with? That's going to leave you with a negative 3. So these are not, they're not equal. Let's do something, let's say 10 um, minus 9. Is that equal to 9 minus 10? Once again, we're going to see, no way. 10 minus 9 is 1. We're used to that. 9 minus 10, that's negative 1. You're, gonna, you're, you're 1 short. So they are not equal. So the commutative property is not true for subtraction. We need to remember that. Let's see if we can go over here and just quickly review. Okay, the multiplicative identity says anything multiplied by 1 is going to equal itself. We can even do something silly like take a fish here, multiply it by 1, and you guessed it, it's going to equal a fish, the very same fish. Very good. Okay, that was silly. So anything times 1 is itself. That's the multiplicative identity. The additive identity says anytime you add zero to a number it remains the same. Okay, so when you add zero to a number, that's the additive identity, the, the value does not change. And then we also looked at the commutative property. The commutative property says that when we're working with addition as our operation, we can change the order or move or commute the terms around and it will not affect our total or sum. And the same thing is true of multiplication. Since multiplication is really repeated addition, we can move our terms around when we're multiplying and it will not affect our product. The product will be the same because multiplication is repeated addition. It's really the same operation, it's just happening multiple times. Well, um, this hopefully was a, a review that you're very familiar with. I will see you tomorrow in class. Goodbye.